Good morning, church. Happy Pentecost Sunday. On this day, when we mark the coming of the Holy Spirit to all God's people, I really needed just to come and sit here in the church in the midst of all of this abundance. I realized there's a massive box of pasta right behind me. But I really needed to be here because in the midst of all of the mess that is happening in our society, that is happening in our world, uh, in a global pandemic, it's really, really, really nice <laughs> to be in a space where I can see the very tangible fruit of people's generosity and goodness. When we didn't get a spot at the food bank this week, much to my dismay, we put out a call to the neighborhood. We said we need groceries to give to our neighbors. Food insecurity in Massachusetts is up 60% among children, 93%. And that's not gonna go away anytime soon. And I was thinking, what are we going to have to give to the over 200 families that we've been serving? And for three days, the doorbell of this church building rang every 10 minutes with people coming by, some on their bikes with a bag of three items, some in their cars with trunkfuls of bread and oranges and onions and pasta to give. And some people went on their computers and they donated financially so that anything we didn't have, we could buy to make sure that our neighbors could go to bed and not be hungry. I have to tell you, it was a beautiful thing. Tiring, but so, so beautiful. The generosity and the outpouring. And so it makes me feel really good to come here this morning and to see the way God's Spirit moved people to do a lovely act of kindness for people that they do not necessarily know in person. Another beautiful thing to see, although painful as well, has been to see the response in our cities, in our communities, of people who've been willing to stand up and say, racism is never okay. Racism, bigotry, and hatred is always wrong. What happened to George Floyd at the hands of a police officer, someone who was supposed to be looking out for the welfare of everybody. That what happened to him should never have happened. A human being's life was taken right in front of our eyes. And people have been going out into the streets to say no, no. What's interesting to me about both of these realities in our world, the reality that there is more hunger and people are generous, the reality that Racism kills our siblings, kills our beloved ones, and the fact that people are willing to stand up and say no to that. It all points to a bigger problem. A problem 
of power. And how power is used in the world. I think the story of Pentecost is a story about power. It's a story about a small group of people who only understood their own language, who only understood their own stories, being given the power to see beyond themselves, being given the power to understand and be understood by others. But this power that they received, it wasn't just for them. It was for everybody. God, the all-powerful, redistributes God's power to God's people. I can't read the story of Pentecost in the book of Acts today without seeing it that way. God redistributing power to God's people. And that power came like the rush of a violent wind, like the flames of a fire and made them passionate to see the salvation of God for everyone. And when I read, when I read that promise and it says, because on that day, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. On that day, when power is redistributed, when George Floyd calls out, when George Floyd calls out for help, he will be saved. I don't mean he's going to go to heaven when he dies. I believe he is in the arms of God right now. But not because that's where he should be. He should still physically be here with us living his life. He called out to be saved. But because the power was in the hands of one whose heart was filled with fear and hatred, whose heart was ruled by a system that says some people are better than other people, that some lives matter more than other lives, Because the power was concentrated in the hands of people who didn't, of people who abused it, of people who abused the power that they had been given. Y'all, I feel like words are so, so inadequate right now. But what does it look like when power gets redistributed so that everybody can be saved, so that everybody's life is valued equally. A 
famous saint of Central America named Dom Helder Camara said famously, when I give people food, they call me a saint. When I ask why people are hungry, they call me a communist. It's beautiful the way the neighborhood came out this week. It was a true gift. But if we think that that's all that we need to be doing here as people who follow Jesus, then I fear we've missed the bigger point of what Jesus came to do. It's important to put a Band-Aid on a wound, but we have to ask where the wound comes from. How did the person get the wound? Why are our neighbors hungry? Why are so many insecure? Why do so many children go to bed with empty stomachs? Because we have a system where the power is not distributed equally. Where during this time of pandemic where people are losing their jobs right and left and right and left. Some people are making billions and billions of dollars. This inequality, this injustice. This system that we live, that lifts up some and pushes down others. Jesus came so that everyone might be saved. Everyone. And as much as we want to make that happen just here in our spot, on our corner, it takes all of us together to make that happen. That's why we elect leaders in society. It's why we create a government. It's why we put together a system that's bigger. <laughs> but our system system doesn't work. The values of the system are not to save the lives of every single person. And so we have to change the system. We have to use that force of violent wind and fire, the force of the spirit to make change so that nobody lies with their head on the ground crying out for their mother. So that nobody hangs on a cross crying out for their mother. So that no child sits in their bed with their stomach crying for their mother. What would it be like if we all really understood one another? What would it be like if when What would it be like if when you saw that picture white women when you saw that when you saw George Floyd with his head on the pavement 
What would it be like if you saw your son, your brother, Would then there be the will to change a system that is set up to keep black bodies under the knees of the powerful? When all those who were gathered and they heard the disciples speaking in all those languages, they said, what does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean for us to follow Jesus? It doesn't mean just coming to a space and singing songs and praying prayers, although I love and miss that. What it means is that we have to be bearers of God in the world to transform the systems and the structures. We need to use all the power that's been afforded to us to say that power needs to be redistributed. How do we do that? I know we don't use the same means as the oppressors. I know we don't use the same means, the same killing violence, the same, the same kind of hate-filled rhetoric. We have to be able to stand up against what's evil in a way that doesn't continue the evil itself. I was humbled when I watched the video from Louisville where the men who had come to protest, the black men who had come to protest, stood around and protected the white cop who'd been separated from his unit. He was alone. And they knew he was probably gonna get his ass whooped. And they stood around him and protected him. Knowing very well that he might not have done the same to them. That kind of power is transformative. Because we have to change the laws that keep things unequal, that keep injustice flourishing we also have to change what's in here for every one of us. We need a radical transformation. And so today we pray, Holy Spirit, <laughs>